Our project is the Luca EV and we're addressing the dual problems of pollution and energy storage. The Luca project was ambitious from the start. The car had to be cheap, fast, light, long range and beautiful. I, I really liked that one too. That's probably one of the most impressive builds and um, his main uh, uh, you know, addition to the EV sort of you know, marquee is doing hub motors. And so it's funny, I, a while ago I wanted to build an EV myself and I thought using hub motors would be the way to go. Because they're so much simpler, you don't need a transmission or a drivetrain or you know, constant velocity joints or anything. A common cause of cost explosion in commercially available solutions is design customization. To address this need without compromising affordability, we use parametric hand models derived from hand anthropometry studies to adjust our design to the needs of each individual. The only required parameters to personalize the design are the hand length and the hand breadth. You know, they, they actually went through and identified the problem. And the problem isn't that, you know, people don't have um, prosthetics. I mean, that's, that's not the, um, it's not really a solvable problem, right? They broke that down and they noticed that, um, you know, part of the problem is the actual mechanical mechanism that's designed to give the uh, prosthetic all this extra um, configurability and freedom. That those parts are expensive. And then they designed this really ingenious mechanism that, um, that they tested in real world scenarios step by step. This is the beta prototype of my portable environmental monitor. This is a rugged aluminum uh, enclosure that can fit your, the palm of your hand. Uh, you can see it has some holes. Uh, this is for the dust sensor. On the back it's the air quality sensor, the BMP 180 for pressure and temperature. Yeah, this one's pretty ambitious. This, this is maybe one of the most ambitious ones because it relies on this large network of sensors. And so, yeah, if you distribute all these sensors, you can make a map of, you know, pollution events and that sort of thing. And uh, it sounds pretty cool. I, I think that having that sort of data available would be very useful for a lot of folks. Steve Thomas has ALS and lost the ability to drive his own chair two years ago. I typed this voice over using my eye gaze, and my computer is generating the voice that you're hearing. I drive o -Matic is a simple addition to users existing equipment that allows them to control their wheelchairs using only their eyes. The eye controlled wheelchair is just a really great example of taking you know, a very personal but also very common uh, problem and then designing something that's simple and easy for people to reproduce and well documented um, and that was just really great to see. In order to perform work safely and a rescue if needed, we use devices like this. It's a rugged little item, you clip it on your chest, but you can't get it any closer than your body to the area unless you resort to hanging it from things. You also can't see the display and it's hard to even hear it if the thing is far away from you. Hence the gas sensor being born. I really like the form factor so the project has a uh, like a rubber ball so you just toss it into your the environment that you want to inspect. I watch like the uh, the chemical safety board YouTube channel and it's actually a big problem. Uh, workers will open like a manhole cover and not know what's going on and then if they descend into the manhole cover sometimes it's hard to get out in a hurry so this would be like a perfect application for that sort of situation. Dolby gives us the ability to see polarization and its images can be used to locate landmines, identify cancerous tissues, see underwater, detect invisible pollutants, and who knows, maybe even observe cloaked UFOs. Inside the Dolby Universal Imager are two filter wheels rotated by standard hobby servos driven by a native root servo hat for the Raspberry Pi 2. I, I had a kind of bit of a soft spot for the Dolby project, the polarization camera, just because that's something I've been interested in experimenting with um, on my own. So, um, you know, that, that project seems like it's maybe more of a building block that I want to see other people uh, uh, improve on. Sensor. So the two electrodes are here, and when I put them in water, let's switch the sensor, the reader on. When I put them in water, you'll see that you know the impedance immediately changes, and the deeper I I put this in, 
now it gives me 100%, which is actually... Yeah, that's another really great application. Uh, you know, the angle is sort of reducing water use. And so if you dump water on the ground, you don't know if the water is, um, you know, if it's soaking your plant to death because it's, you know, soaked into the ground. And so I thought that the most innovative part of the project was actually the water sensor, which is like a couple of electrodes encased in plaster of Paris. And then you would, you know, put that in like a four foot deep hole. And so when that thing gets wet, the conductivity goes up. This is my electrically enhanced wet scrub. This technology can scrub out fine particulates and volatile organic compounds in buildings and do so cheaply and effectively. This technology is highly scalable depending on the application you want to use it for. It could be a small countertop device or you can scale it up to something like this size. Now this device would be more suitable as a centralized air cleaning unit for buildings and workshops. I thought the concept was really cool. It potentially solves a huge problem in like uh, indoor air quality, especially in countries that really need it, like uh, China and India, where they have like just horrible air, uh, outdoor air quality. Introducing FarmBot, humanity's open source CNC farming machine. FarmBot plants seeds with millimeter accuracy and then waters them individually, the exact amount that each plant needs. FarmBot can grow a variety of crops, all in the same area, at the same time, and each plant is cared for in an optimized, automated way. And so they currently have like two heads for the robot. One is like the seed planter and then the watering head. And then they said, well, this could be, you could put gas dispensing heads and like other liquid dispensing heads. And so I think the idea is that you would have kind of a, uh, a test garden. So if you wanted to figure out like the ideal fertilizing schedule for a particular plant, you could you know, matrix this out and basically test that out. My entry for the 2015 Hackaday Prize is a solar-powered utility vehicle, or SUV for short. I designed the vehicle for the work that I do in South Sudan. I needed a mobile workshop that would allow me to move from place to place and power tools when I got there. While I designed it for the specific purpose, I believe as a platform it could be useful in many other ways. Many of the areas in South Sudan where I live lack any sort of municipal power. In many rural areas, there's no source of power at all. Fuel is only available in limited areas, and even then, there are often shortages. Isn't it, it's a really interesting project. Uh, I like the fact that it came out of his own need, and he mm -hmm. just kind of built it out of available materials. I think that's really kind of, that's where, um, that's really the spirit of hacking.